Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2019 Senior Recognition Ceremony. I think this is our 18th year, maybe? 17th year? Um, I'm Mike Dumas, President of the St. Lawrence Lewis County School Board Association, and it is my great honor to be here this afternoon to recognize the outstanding accomplishments of our young people. Um, years ago, I figured out the only way I would get into one of these is to volunteer, so here I am. I have no doubts that the young men and women in this auditorium with us today will go on to do amazing things. You have all worked hard to be among the top of your class academically, as well as athletically, musically, and artistically. We are so proud of you. Many of you will go on to college next year to pursue higher learning and gain the necessary knowledge to carry you on your life's journey, along your life's journey. However, wherever you end up, I urge you all to remember your roots, acknowledge those who helped you achieve your success, and stay humble. In the spirit of thanking those who have helped us, I would like to thank Maureen Bushy for organizing this event. I would also like to thank the Bosey's Print Shop staff for putting together the program and Madrid Waddington Central School Tri M Musicians for their great singing. It was fantastic and your musical. They're up there someplace, I think. Special thanks to Madden Waddington Central School Superintendent Eric Burke, Principal Joe Binion, Food Service Director Steve Adams, and their staff for preparing the appetizers and hosting this event. And thank you to our guest, Nicole Conant, for joining us this afternoon. I would now like to turn the podium over to Thomas Burns, District Superintendent for BOCES. Mike, uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here this afternoon, even though I can't see any of you. Um, so I, I, to answer Mike's question, this is my 18th uh, senior recognition dinner. I know they were doing it uh, a few years before I came along, and uh, usually my role is to just talk about the history of this event. Um, and, and I do believe it was about 25 years ago that a committee of the St. Lawrence Lewis County School Boards Association uh, started talking about a way that they could recognize uh, some of the highest performing students in the region. Um, one of those committee members is here, Marjorie McCullough. Marge, where are you? If you could stand up and be recognized. In addition to Marge McCullough, uh, Ann Adams, who was then superintendent of Herman DeKalb, was on that uh, group of people as well. Uh, and what ensued uh, for many years was uh, a dinner at uh, Cheel at Clarkson University, and we discovered this year that Cheel was under construction. So I know Mike had a, a long list of thank yous, and we certainly appreciate Magic Waddington uh, hosting these, this year. Um, it's a great venue, and it's nice to get out in one of the school districts. Um, and we also want to thank, of course, uh, the students, but their families. And we know uh, parents and families, the role that you've played uh, in getting these students here to this day and all of their accomplishments. And to the students, uh, 36 of you were selected from the 18 public school districts in the St. Lawrence Lewis region. Um, and that's out of 15,000 students uh, in those school districts, pre-K through 12. So that's pretty impressive that 36 of you were recognized and invited here today. Uh, so normally I'm between uh, dinner and the event, but we don't have to worry about that uh, today. And uh, I think it's time for me to introduce Nicole Conan uh, to the podium, who is our guest speaker for today, who is the assistant to President Kristen Esterberg at SUNY Potsdam. Thank you, Nicole. Sorry, you weren't kidding when you said the lights were bright. Well, good afternoon. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today to serve as the guest speaker for the 2019 Awards Banquet. It's an exciting time for you students as you wrap up a chapter in your life and embark on a new journey. And I want to share my story with you today in hopes that it will inspire you as you start on that journey. So I have to start with the first job that I ever held, and that was working at a small zoo, running the animal show three times a day. 
It's really not as glamorous as it may seem. Imagine listening to Who Let the Dogs Out three times a day, six days a week, as tiny little dogs ran out to start the show. To this day, I still twitch when that song comes on the radio. Part of my job was selling three things. I sold popcorn and soda, and I also sold Kodak camera film. Now I'm guessing that 90% of you will never know the thrill of taking a picture, taking out the film, bringing it to the store, and maybe, just maybe, in an hour, seeing what you captured. Today we are an instant generation. We take a photo and immediately see what it looks like. It's simple to Photoshop or delete photos that we don't want to see. But I can tell you that life or success is not instant and is actually a story we'll always be developing. For me, my story began with my dislike of high school. I absolutely hated it. I can remember the exact day that I was told I was going nowhere by a woman who I thought was there to inspire me. I decided to graduate a year early from college, from high school, sorry. I opened a very large college view book, pointed my finger, and landed on SUNY Potsdam. 14 years later, I'm still here, although that's for later in my speech. My hometown is in Cairo, New York, which is about four hours directly south of us. My grandmother visited once in her 80s, and she said, I've never seen as many beautiful lakes as I did coming up, but I could have done without all the curves in the road. But to me, I'm thankful for those curves in the road as they symbolize my journey and that I've taken up until now and would not change. My journey started at SUNY Potsdam with me pursuing music education. But guess what? I have stage fright, unless of course I'm in the shower. So this caused a huge curve in the road. I changed my mind a few times and landed on speech communication and English writing. And yes, my parents asked me many times, what was I gonna do with that degree? I finished my degree requirements and I decided I wanted to be an English teacher. So I did my master's in teaching. I had the opportunity to travel all the way to Australia and student teach. This experience absolutely changed my life. And just for the record, although koala bears may seem cute and cuddly, they actually smell horrible. Upon completing my degree requirements, I knew finding a job was next. I was able to teach at Potsdam High School, filling a leave replacement, and loved it. In the audience today are Mrs. Chambers, Mr. Crookshank, and Mr. Brady, three superintendents who encouraged me and allowed me to be creative. Mr. Crookshank even allowing me to bring in a mouse as a class pet when I was at the high school. Around the same time, a position opened at SUNY Potsdam in the Center for School Partnerships and Teacher Certification. I was hired for that position. This position allowed me to oversee the Student Teaching in Australia program, and I helped students who had the same love as teaching as I had. I fell in love with being back at my alma mater, SUNY Potsdam, but I knew I needed to know more about how higher education worked. So I completed another master's in higher education administration. But then after a few years, I felt like I was driving on a straight road that kept going and going. I wasn't challenged. There was just so much more I wanted to do and accomplish in higher education. So then I decided to go back to Albany to complete a fellowship at SUNY System Administration in the Chancellor's Office. Chancellor Nancy Zimfer at the time looked at me and said, you know, you really need to get your PhD. And I said, me? Wait, are you talking to me? She really thought I could do it. Well, she's the rock star in higher education, so I just had to take her advice. I completed all of my coursework and then had to take my doctoral comprehensive exam. I will never forget the moment I was driving home to Cairo, literally on one of those curvy roads, finding out I failed. I didn't know what to do, I was devastated. However, I regrouped and I reflected on why it was that I wanted my PhD and what it meant for my future. I remember the words of my advisor who said, this type of bump in the road can end off paying long and lend off paying off long in the long run. So I took the exam again, and I guess what? I passed. It took the encouragement of others and a belief in myself that helped me to be successful. My journey could have stopped right there. I could have wasted all of that money, all of that time that I had put into my studies. While I still have to complete my dissertation, I know that I'm that much closer to being a doctor. And even though my white coat might um, lead you to believe that I'm going to be a surgeon, that is not the case as I tell my family I'm a doctor of the minds. 
So today, I serve as executive assistant to the president at SUNY Potsdam, which includes overseeing government and community relations for the college. Yes, the girl who was told she'd go nowhere, came to Potsdam at the age of 17, had stage fright, and who changed her mind a dozen times on what she wanted to be when she grew up. I recall a moment five years ago when I was sitting at President Esterberg's inauguration. I was sobbing, watching her up on stage become SUNY Potsdam's first female president. In that moment, I realized I wanted to be a president. Today, it is my dream to be a college president. I had no clue at the moment I would find myself a few years later on her team, learning from her every day. Curves happen in the road, and sometimes when you least expect them. Imagine the curve I put in my husband's road when I told him I wanted to be a college president. And every day I look out my office window and see our beautiful campus and know that I'm still writing my story. And you know what? I'm happy because of what my journey has taught me. Graduating high school is really just the start of your story. There will be many, and I mean many curves along the way. I hope that you will embrace those curves rather than avoiding them. I truly believe that it is the curves in our lives that help to define us and steer us to where we're meant to be. I hope that you will also remember that at the end of the day, you're not alone. When the road gets too bumpy or you find yourself lost, lean on those around you. There are people who have paved the road for you to be successful. Chancellor Zinfer and President Esterberg are just two people in my life who have provided me with the encouragement and the environment needed to be successful. And even though my family teases me by calling me Dr. Pepper, I know that they are proud of me and would be there for when I need them. So I'd just like to take a moment and ask the families to stand, whether you're a parent, you're a sibling, you're a grandparent, can everybody just stand if you're a family member? I know my family's impact on my journey, so let's give everybody a round of applause for their impact. to share my journey with you today, and I am happy to help in whatever way I can as you write your own story. I wish you all the best as you set off on your journey. Thank you. Wow, what an incredible story and powerful message. So uh, next, now we are going to do the certificates. Um, Regent Outerkirk was supposed to be here this, this afternoon, but she's taken ill, but, and she does pass on a message to all the students, wishing them the best of luck in their endeavors and success in their future. She's been here many years as, a, as a, an accomplished speaker, and uh, it, it's nice to have her around, and we certainly do miss her. So now it is my honor to welcome Lisa Levison, Levison. Vice President of St. Lawrence Lewis County School Board Association to join me in presenting the certificates. So please hold your applause until all certificates have been presented. Once the certificates have been presented, I ask that the seniors come to the front of the room for a group photo. And as you receive your certificate individually, we'll take a, a short, or, yeah, Rebecca will take a photo there. So at the end, we'll do a group photo. One second, please. From Brazier Falls Central School District, Daisy Bisnett. From Brazier Falls Central School District, Yacinta Gomez. I hope I pronounced that right. From Canton Central School, Rachel Noble. Also from Canton, Hannah Tupper.
Clifton Fine Central School who are not in attendance today. We have Zaina Northrup and Lydia Kerr. Colton Pierpont Central School, who are also not attending today. Madeline Roussel and Grace Roussel. Edwards Knox Central School, who are not attending today. Spencer Thomas and Zachary Scott. From Governor Central School, Elena Porter. Also from Governor, Keegan Matthews. From Hammond Central School, Brandy Millsap. Also from Hammond, Amanda Grace Pete. From Harrisville Central School, Philip Kramer. Also from Harrisville, Peyton Schmidt. From Herman DeKalb, who are not in attendance today, we have Garrett Willard and Carrie Hintz. From Hubleton Central School, Hannah Sarasoli. Also from Hubleton, Samantha Flynn. From Lisbon Central School, Abby Thompson. Also from Lisbon Central School, Austin Blue. From Madrid Waddington Central School, Emily Georgia. Also from Madrid Central School, Morgan Saber. From Messina Central School, Octavia Biscovich. Also from Messina Central School, Hayden Horner. From Morristown Central School, who are not in attendance this afternoon, Rihanna Chapin, or Chapin and Lauren Woodcock. From Norwood Norfolk Central School, Courtney Delage. Also from Norwood, Sydney Levison. From Ogdensburg Free Academy, not attending today, 
Shelby Ross, and Jake Van House. From Parishville Hopkinton Central School, Haley Gray. They're not here as well. Uh, Haley Gray and Jessica Mitchell. From Potsdam Central School, Jennifer Zhang. Also from Potsdam Central School, Carolyn Jane Bergen. And to our guest speaker today, Nicole Conan. Congratulations to all the students, families. Nicole, you've done a great job. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for everyone in attendance, everyone who spoke, every, everybody here, everybody who put on a, a great performance today. Um, congratulations to the seniors and best of luck in your next endeavors. This concludes our program for the afternoon. Thank you very much.